What is going on guys? This is Crozen and welcome back to another Baldur's Gate 3 build. This time we are going to look at my Shadowheart Life Cleric Healer, Support, Summoner, all in one build. So for my Honor Mode run, I used Shadowheart as a Life Cleric and it just made me realize just how good healing is in this game. I know a lot of people don't like to heal in this game, they would rather just prefer damage. Uh, that's great, uh, you could just play the game however you want, but yeah, with all of the items that you get in Act 1, I really wanted to revise my pure Life Cleric build that I had for Shadow uh, that I made a couple of months ago. That build was good, I mean the stats work out well with that build. Um, there's really nothing wrong with it other than the fact that I just didn't get a chance to showcase all of the good healing items. And I felt like I could have just made that build a little bit better. And that is where this build comes into play here. So with this build, you're still going to get all of the level 6 spells that you can with a pure life cleric. Uh, so you're going to have access to Hero's Feast. But you're still going to have a 1 level dip in Wizard, which means that you can add a whole bunch of utility to this build that a life cleric just wouldn't be able to get. So, you know, you could have Shield, Magic Missile, Haste all kinds of neat summons as well. So yeah, let's get into making the Shadowheart Life Cleric build. So for the starting class and abilities, we are going to start with a Cleric. So go ahead and select the Life Domain subclass. For the three cantrips, I recommend Guidance, Light, and Produce Flame. You can do a little bit of nice fire damage with Produce Flame. Light is going to be useful for the weapons that do not have the glow effect on them as this is going to really help with our current gear setup. And then Guidance is probably the best cantrip in this game, so you got to get this. For the abilities, we are going to start with 17 Constitution. I'm not going to assume that anyone is going to use the Hag's Hair on Shadowheart, so just start out with 17 Constitution. We're going to get that with 18 with a feat. Go for 16 Wisdom as well, since this is her spellcasting modifier. And then I also prefer to go with Dexterity over Strength, mainly for the initiative. You are going to deal uh, a little bit less damage and you're not going to be as accurate by doing this, but I feel like initiative is just more important for Shadowheart than trying to deal the most melee damage possible. So I recommend 14 Dexterity and only 10 Strength. You can lower your Intelligence down to 8, same for Charisma. We are going to be wearing the Warped Headband of Intellect. So theoretically that's going to put us at 17 intelligence with a minus 1 since we are dropping this down to 8. Um, it's not really much of a concern though. For skill proficiencies, just go with whatever you want here. There's really not much to choose with Shadowheart. I just select Medicine and Persuasion. So now we could go through the level progression all the way up to level 12. And it's pretty simple at this point since we're not really going to get too heavy into multiclassing. All we really want to do here is go 5 straight levels in a Cleric, that way we get those nice level 3 spells. And for the prepared spells, what I'm going to do is every time you get an additional spell level, I will go over my recommended prepared spells. Uh, so for this one, it's pretty simple, we only have level 1 spells here, so I would go with Sanctuary, Command, and Healing Word. These three are going to be useful for the entire game, so I would always keep these prepared. And from there, it's really up to you for the rest of them. I'd go for Create or Destroy Water, Inflict Wounds for a nice melee spell, and then you could also go with Shield of Faith here, since this is a good early game concentration spell. At level 3, we get level 2 spells, the main one here being Aid, so you always want to make sure that you upcast this all the way up to a level 5 spell. I would not waste a level 6 spell slot on Aid since there are better options, uh, but this is just going to be your bread and butter after every long rest to go ahead and buff up your party with Aid. So for the additional level 2 spells that you can prepare now, you got a couple of really good ones here with Warding Bond, Calm Emotions, Hold Person, Spiritual Weapon, and Enhance Ability. Um, I would go with Spiritual Weapon here, Calm Emotions, and Enhance Ability. At level 4 we get our first feat, so what we want to do for this is go ahead and select Resilient and select Constitution. This will get our Constitution up to 18 and we will also gain proficiency in Constitution saving throws, which is really what we want here. And then for the additional cantrip, I would just select Sacred Flame at this point. At level 5, we get the two most important spells for our build, and those are Mass Healing Word and Spirit Guardian. So you want to make sure that you go ahead and prepare those, and start using those right away. 
So now that we're level 6, this is a good opportunity to go ahead and multi-class into a wizard since we do have level 3 spells unlocked. And around this time, you should get the Warped Headband of Intellect, so you might as well get some use out of it. So for the 3 cantrips, you could go for some offensive cantrips here like Ray of Frost and Shocking Grasp for the Metal Armor enemies. And you could also pick up Minor Illusion here. For the 6 spells... Um, it's really up to you, but there's two that are really important that you are going to use for the entire game, and that is Magic Missile and Shield. So you always want to have these prepared. Um, from there, it's really personal choice. I like to pick up Long Strider, Disguise Self, Witch Bolt, and Chromatic Orb. So now that we got that one level wizard dip, we can learn all different types of spells through scrolls. So what we want to do at this point is just go back and put the rest of our levels into a cleric. So go ahead and get to cleric level 6. Keep going until you get to cleric level 7, which will be at level 8. You do get additional level 4 spells. I wouldn't worry about preparing these. Just save your level 4 spells for upcasting aid, spirit guardians, or mass healing word. And then go all the way up to Cleric level 8, which will be at level 9. You will get your second feat. And what you want to do for that feat is go for Ability Improvement and get your Wisdom up to 18. So at Cleric level 9, you get level 5 Cleric spells. And I would also recommend doing the same that you did for the level 4 spells. Don't prepare any of these. Save these for not only some really good summons that you will get from the Wizard Scrolls, but also upcasting aid. So just go ahead, get up to cleric level 10, and you will get an additional cantrip. At this point, you could go for whichever one you want here. Um, Thaumaturgy works well if you plan on using her for any dialogue checks. Otherwise, just go for probably Blade Ward. And finally, at level 12, we get our level 6 cleric spells, the main one here being Hero's Feast, as that is really what I wanted to get out of this build. Don't worry too much about Planar Ally because there is a level 5 Deva scroll that you can get in Act 3 and that's really what we're going to be using instead of Planar Ally. So for your prepared spells, a final look will look something like this. So as I stated, we'll keep our same three spells with Sanctuary, Command, and Healing Word and go over some of the other ones that I already mentioned here. Um, Spirit Guardians, Mass Healing Word being the two main spells with this build. You could also add Speak With Dead or Animate Dead, and then just go for Heroes Feast as well. Next up is our all-important gear setup, and with Clerics there are just so many different gear variations that I'm just going to show you my ideal setup here. So we're going to start with the Warped Headband of Intellect. This is mainly for the 17 Intelligence, but more importantly, the four prepared spells that you can get on the wizard side. So what you can do is if you really don't want to wear this, you don't have to. You could take that off after you prepare the spells and the spells will still be active and you can still use them. So yeah, it's a bit of an exploit. I personally don't use it, but you can definitely get by with doing that. And then you could use something else like the Holy Lance Helm in its place. Uh, we're also going to go with Cloak of Protection for the armor class and saving throw. Luminous Armor. Really good medium armor here, um, probably the best for Shadowheart. Those radiating orbs are really going to stack up with the Spirit Guardians. The Reviving Hands for the Blade Ward effect every time you heal an ally. You could also go for Hell Rider's Pride, which you can get in Act 1. And then once you get to Act 3, just substitute those for the Reviving Hands. Boots of Stormy Clamor for the Reverberation. Um, what you can do with this is cast Magic Missile and, you know, as long as they fail that saving throw, then they will get knocked prone. So I actually like it. Just gives you another effect that you can add to this build. If you don't want to use Boots of Stormy Clamor, you have a couple of options. Boots of Aid and Comfort are really good Act 1 boots. You also have Boots of Striding so that way you can't get knocked prone and you cannot break your concentration that way. So Spellcrux Amulet, I feel like this is going to be the best one for our specific build here because we have so many cool level 6 spells that we can use. So we definitely want to make sure that we can restore that spell slot and use two level 6 spells. But some good alternatives would be Amulet of the Devout and then also Amulet of Greater Health. And then an early game Amulet would be Amulet of Restoration. For the rings, we're going to go with the Whispering Promise and the Coruscation Ring. This is going to add on to the Radiating Orbs. And then for the Whispering Promise, you get this in Act 1. 
probably the best healing ring in the game. It's going to provide a bless, which is going to work for two turns, and it is just amazing. Um, gotta have this. Make sure you do not miss this ring in Act 1. And then for the weapons, we are going to go with the Handmaiden's Mace. This is mainly to give ourselves 18 strength, so that way we have a decent attack bonus, so that way we can still attack for a filler attack with Shadowheart, and we're not really going to uh, miss those attacks too often. But you have so many different options for weapons. You know, Blood of Lathander, the Saluna's Spear of Night. You could even go for a staff like Marco Heshk here. Um, so many different options. It's really up to you. And then for the shield, I personally prefer Ketheric Shield for the Spell Save Difficulty class and Spell Attack roll. Um, but you could go for Vaconia's Walking Fortress instead, as that'll give you an extra armor class that way. And then for the bow, we're just going to go with Bow of Awareness for the initiative. Um, it really just depends. You could also go for Hell Rider Longbow for even more initiative. It just really depends. Sometimes you might find that you don't want to start first. Um, that way, uh, you know, everybody's already going to have full health. So really the only thing you could do is just use a mass healing word on them. But yeah, that is how we are going to gear our Shadow Heart. So before we head into combat, after every long rest, we have to set up our summons and buffs with Shadow Heart. So I want to show this real quickly so that way you guys understand what to do. So head over to your spell book, go to your wizard spells, and we are going to cast our summons first. So our Conjure Minor Elemental, our Conjure Elemental, and our Summon Deva. Um, you should have all three of these learned through scrolls. You get the Summon Deva scroll in Act 3. So the cool thing about the summons is that you can prepare them. And after you summon them, you can unprepare these spells and then use those three slots for something else. So we're going to start out with the Conjure Minor Elemental. I like going for the Ice Mephites. The Mud Mephites are also pretty good. Then we're going to summon our Deva. And finally, we're going to summon our Elemental. I like upcasting this to a level 6 for the Water Myrmidon. And so now what we can do is we could go back to our spell book, unprepare those three spells, and then we can use those for something else. As I stated earlier in this video, shield and magic missile are going to be really good with this build. You want to have those on. And then we could go for Misty Step, Haste. You could even go for Globe of Invulnerability. Even Long Strider if you don't have someone else in your party that can do that spell. So... Um, after that, we want to go ahead and use our Spell Slot Restoration on a level 6 spell with the Spell Crux Amulet. And then we could go ahead and cast Hero's Feast. And the last step is to go ahead and upcast our aid to the highest that we can do, up to a level 5. And now we are ready for a fight. So now we could get into the combat showcase featuring Shadowheart, and on the first turn, the two bread and butter spells that you're going to use in most cases are going to be Spirit Guardians and Mass Healing Word. So Spirit Guardians is going to be your main damage dealing spell, but it's also going to apply those really nasty debuffs of Radiating Orbs, thanks to our Luminous Armor. And then Mass Healing Word is going to be one of your main AoE healing spells, and it's only a bonus action, but the good thing here is that it's going to give you two turns of Bless and Blade Ward thanks to our items. So that is really why we want to use this on the first turn. So first step is to go ahead and upcast a Spirit Guardians to the highest that you have available. In our case, it is going to be a level 4 spell. If you want to go higher than that, then just substitute one of our summons. So that way you can get a higher upcast of Spirit Guardians. And then go into a Mass Healing Word. Now it seems a little strange using a Mass Healing Word when most of our allies are at full health. In fact, all of our allies are at full health other than Shadowheart here. And we're not really using this for the healing though. We're using this to get the Bless and the Blade Ward for two turns. As that will really sway the fight in your favor and just give you some really good buffs right at the start of the fight. Now, the other thing to keep in mind here is the Bless. I know it says two turns, but it's only two turns for the allies that are on the same turn simultaneously as Shadowheart. So in this case, the Water Myrmidon and my main character. So the characters that you can change around while you are on Shadowheart's turn, basically. 
Every other ally is only going to get blessed for one turn, as once it gets around towards getting to their turn, they lose one turn of bless that way. So it's a little weird the way that ring works out, uh, but just keep that in mind that you're going to get the most out of it whenever you got a lot of allies that are on the same turn as Shadowheart. So now what we can do is just start running into the enemies and applying those nasty radiating orbs here. And now what we can do is go into our Water Myrmidon. I'm going to use Elemental Warp up here in order to get some high ground. And then for our main spell, we're going to be using Explosive Icicle. This is a really nice spell as it can also leave ice on the ground. So you also got to be careful with it. You can't put it like right in the path of wherever Shadowheart is going to be running. Try to put it to the side. That way it doesn't break her concentration or she doesn't get knocked prone. And that is how we will end turn one. So now we're in turn two and we can showcase the Deva a little bit. And a few things happen there at the end of that first turn. This enemy tried to run into Shadowheart to shove her and he got knocked prone thanks to the reverb stacks. And this enemy ended up shoving Shadowheart and then he died from the Spirit Guardians afterwards. Uh, so the bottom line here is, you know, once Spirit Guardians is active, these enemies are going to look to shove Shadowheart like crazy. So just keep that in mind whenever you're dealing with this. Um, that is why having that athletics bonus from the Handmaiden's Mace is really good here from that 18 strength. So what we can do now is just use our Deva and attack probably this enemy since uh, we got the advantage here. So we're going to go right into a Wrathful Smite. So now it's Shadowheart's turn and what we can do is just run right into all of these enemies. And this enemy got knocked prone thanks to the reverb stacks. So uh, that helps us out even more there. So in this case, I'm going to basically simulate a scenario. Let's say that uh, we got some party members over here that are low on health and we just can't reach them. Well, in this case, this is where Misty Step comes into play. What we can do with Misty Step is get back over to our party. And we can use a Preserve Life to not waste a spell slot and to still heal them up and to refresh the Bless and Blade Ward effect. And so now what we can do is go back into our Water Myrmidon and we can use Explosive Icicle on these four enemies that are bunched up. So now we're in turn three and this fight is basically over at this point with just Shadow Heart and the two summons. So what we can do is we can actually attack one of these enemies but they are kind of low on health and my Water Myrmidon is coming up here pretty soon so I could maybe get another Explosive Icicle. So what I'm going to do is target this enemy over here. I know this enemy has 59 health so we could probably get more out of our damage this way. Uh, the percentage is lower. I really don't like 55% here. Hopefully I don't miss it. Um, that is not ideal, but at least we do get the most damage possible that way. Now it's our Water Myrmidon's turn, and I'm just going to go back into an Explosive Icicle and remove these low health enemies. And now we can do an attack with Shadowheart. So when we're talking about attacks with Shadowheart, we have four different options really. We can use Turn Undead on the undead enemies, we can use Magic Missile, we can use our main hand attack, or we can use Shocking Grasp. It's really just going to depend on the fight and the scenario. In this case, since this is an enemy with metal armor, I'm just going to use Shocking Grasp and deal some damage that way. So I hope you guys enjoyed my Life Cleric all-in-one healer support and summoner build. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Give this one a try and let me know what you think. And if you have any other kind of builds that you want to see, let me know in the comments and I might get around towards making those. And thank you guys for watching till the end and I will see you in the next one.